Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. That's sweet little Rose back there. This is Coloring Bliss and I'm going to show you how to use the Quick Color Picker. This is an awesome color scheme selector tool. Now, some of you have already purchased this awesome book right here. Some of you are ready to download the digital version and some of you have never seen this before and you're curious about whether this can help you pick beautiful color schemes. So this book is broken into two parts. The first part is the color scheme selector and it's full of color manipulative tools. Are you a hands-on learner? Do you like things you can hold in your hand and help you learn and understand things? Well the first part of this book is for you and the second part is a pre-colored color schemes ready to help you dive in and start picking color schemes right away. I'm going to show you how to use both parts. Okay so let's take a look inside this book and see the beautiful beginning. This is the color scheme selector part of the book where we get to cut out color wheels and hold things in our hands. Okay, now hold on, Jennifer. I know you're excited to cut out those really fun color wheels, but I'm excited to tell them really quick a little bit about the back of the Quick Color Picker because there are some beautiful color schemes. In fact, there's 144 different beautiful color schemes. Look at them all, so pretty, so inspiring. So let me tell you really quick about this and then I'll let the other Jennifer start cutting out the color wheels, okay? So how this works is there is a page back here for every color on the ar artist color wheels. So here's yellow, yellow green, and so on. And what we did is, um, the color wheels, let me show you. Okay, here's an artist color wheel, right? And here is one of the color wheels that you're about to cut out, okay? So, for instance, we are on the yellow green page, and if I line this up right here like this, you can see we've got yellow, green, red, and violet showing, and if you come over here to the split complementary here, we've got yellow, green, red, and violet. So there's one, and now if you rotate this wheel, Again, so yellow green is showing because we're on the yellow green page. Now we've got yellow green, yellow orange, and violet. Yellow green, yellow orange, and violet. And now if you rotate it one more time, because there's three windows. Now we've got yellow green, blue green, and red. Okay, so yellow, green, blue, green, and red. So that's how all of these different color schemes came into existence. We took each of the wheels that we're about to cut out together and created this page. So it's a quick, fast way for you to see all of the color schemes laid out in front of you. So let's say you have a coloring page. This is one that we're going to be looking at here in a few minutes together. Maybe you have a coloring page like this and you know you want to feature yellow green as the main dominant color in this page. All you need to do is flip to this page now and you're presented with all these beautiful color balanced, color theory correct color schemes all based around yellow green. And all all you need to do now is look at them and pick one that inspires you and you think will work for the coloring page that you're about to work on. Isn't that exciting? You get to just flip through here and be inspired and have the confidence to know that these color schemes are balanced and ready for you and oh, they're just amazing. Okay, so once you've found a color scheme that you like, so later in this video, the scenario I give is, let's say we're coloring this page for our mom, she loves red, and we end up um, settling on this color scheme right here, square tetratic, and then the next scenario I say is that we want to use these pencils here, our Black Widows, which I have a full set of, and um, so what we need to do now is find pencils that are going to match in with the square tetradic um, color scheme. So I'm going to walk you through step by step later in this video how to find the right pencils 
for a good light, medium, and dark blue violet, red, yellow, orange, and green. And um, back here you see the uh, sneak peek of what I find in the Black Widows for green, yellow, orange, red, and blue violet so that I can do my coloring now with the Black Widow pencils. That's these pencils right here. So I'm going to walk you through all of that, help you understand how this system works and gets you picking colors confidently. You get to color match these colors with these swatches here. We've got multiple ways for you to find these colors. Let me show you another page right here to help you match your tools to the correct colors. I'm going to help you with all of that here in just a minute. So I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek because, oh man, doesn't that just inspire you? Just makes you want to start coloring. So exciting. All right, let me get you back to Jennifer. We got to cut out these color wheels. I'm so excited. So we start out with an artist color wheel. Now, if you're going to download and print this at home, your printer will print you know, the colors to the best of its ability. And so that's great. Um, this one, if you get it printed by us, we have color matched it to the color wheel and you're going to get a beautiful printed version like this. Now, as we start into the book a bit deeper, you're going to see the things we get to cut out. We've got this wheel here, a whole bunch of little um, circles here. I'm gonna explain all of this. I'm just gonna thumb through it really quick so you can see all the fun things we're gonna be cutting out. Here we're getting into where you get to start picking color schemes. This is the complementary color scheme, analogous color scheme, split complementary color scheme, my favorite, the triadic color scheme, the square tetradic color scheme, the rectangle tetradic color scheme, that's the last one. Now, as you can see on each of these wheels, there are instructions and tips, and down here, these are the instructions for cutting out each wheel. So what we're going to do for each wheel is we need to cut each one out here, and then each of these little windows get cut out, and we're also going to cut out these little red, um, you know, each color dot. So we have a color for each of the colors on the color wheel, plus we have the secondary and the tertiary colors. So um, once we have all these cut out, I can show you how we use all these to pick color schemes. But first we have to figure out how we're going to cut them all out. Now the first time we did this, this was several years ago, this was kind of the core. How I really learned about picking color schemes was through a tool like this. And the way I cut all mine out was with a good old pair of scissors and an X-Acto knife. So if that's all you've got, you can do this. You can cut them out. And then what I did was I used an X-Acto knife and very carefully cut out all these little circles and made the little windows. That worked really great. I just sat in front of the TV and just enjoyed the cutting process. It was a little tedious and it wasn't perfect, but it worked really good and it, it made everything beautiful and I was able to use the tool perfectly. But this time around, I decided to sort of, as my kids say, level up. <laughs> oh, they're just really going to mock me for using that. That's Steve, by the way. You just heard him laugh. Hello, he's, everyone. He's my husband and business partner. If you've been around with Coloring Bliss at all, you've seen him. So I've invested in a few different tools, and we're going to work on them together because you may have some of these tools already sitting in your stash, and I want to show you your options, and then you can decide what to purchase. So I've got a couple punches. This is a one inch punch. And I also purchased a three quarter inch punch because I wasn't sure which one would work best. And then we also, because a lot of our viewers here said this was an even better option, we purchased the Circle Cutter by Fiskars. And as I was reading the reviews on Amazon for the Fiskars Circle Cutter, everyone said if you're cutting out um, cardstock type um, papers. You are going to go through these blades really fast. So I purchased some spare blades because I didn't want to get dull blades. So these are the things I have purchased. I've got X-Acto knives, scissors, cutters. We're good to go in any circumstance here. So that's what we're going to try. And I can tell you from my experience here what my advice to you would be to purchase after this.
So I'm guessing that the, the one inch punch is going to be one of our best tools here. And so what we're going to do is cut out all of these um, manipulatives and I'm going to store them for now in a sheet protector. You could use an envelope and clip the envelope to the back of your book or a sheet protector like I'm going to do. There's lots of different ways to store this. It's up to you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just cut these pages out of this book and all the ones that I'm gonna be cutting apart and that will make this whole process easier. So let's go ahead and hit fast forward while I cut these pages out and then we'll proceed from there. All right, and before I hit fast forward, I just wanted to also mention that if you want to, when you purchase this book from us at Coloring Bliss, you can purchase this book unbound, so all your pages come loose, and then you don't have to cut this apart at all. You're ready to go. You can skip this little step. Okay, let's cut these apart. Okay, we've got them all cut out of the book now. And as you can see, if you purchase it from Coloring Bliss um, Print Shop, you get them printed on this beautiful, heavy cardstock. So once these are all cut out, they're really durable and will last you a long time. So that's a really good perk of purchasing it from the Coloring Bliss Print Shop. Okay, so the next step is going to be with my nice scissors here. I'm going to actually, Oh, I was gonna say I'm gonna cut around the wheels, but wait a second, we have our new fancy tool. I think this will actually cut around the whole thing. <laughs> Use it. <laughs> All right, let's try this new tool. I've never used this before, so let's hit fast forward while I get this out of the package and go through the learning process, and then I'll teach you what I learned. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let me tell you what I have learned about the Fiskars Circle Cutter. What I've done is we took out this little piece right here. It's called, I keep forgetting what it's called. Gripper foot. The gripper foot. And when you remove this, it reveals this little needle right here. And that needle lets you line up much better with this center dot on each of these circles. Now, as I go here, remember that if you don't own one of these, or if this seems too fiddly, just use a pair of scissors. <laughs> so you don't have to do all of this if you don't want to. I'm just trying to show you an option. Okay, so remove this little gripper foot and use the needle to help you line up to the center. The other thing I decided to do was to move, when you adjust this arm here to the, the appropriate width, we used a ruler um, and you measure the entire width of the circle and then you can slide it along here according to either inches or centimeters, whatever you want to do. And it will tell you, you know, you've got about a six inch circle so you set it at six inches and then that will give you the right right diameter diameter of the circle geometry is hard <laughs> anyway so then I gave myself a little bit of an allowance and you can see um, it, it gives just a little bit of a buffer on each side I kind of like that in case I off center it just a little bit with my cutting so that works pretty good all right so now what you do is you line this up this little needle with the center of the circle as best as you can and because we've given ourselves a little bit of an allowance we've got a little leeway here so if you don't get it exactly right it's not going to cut anything off at least it shouldn't so I stick my head right in here make sure I get it as lined up as I can and then you push down on the plunger with your non-dominant hand and you hold it as tight as you can and I've taped down the paper so that it won't shift on me and I'm on the Tim Holtz Tonic Studios glass media mat which is okay for cutting on I can use a roller cutter or whatever I want if you've got some other cutting mat that will work great too okay then I use my dominant hand and we're going to spin the arm all the way around. I can see I'm off a little bit, but that should be fine. And it's free. So yeah, it was a little fiddly to set it up and you know, but now that it's, I've now that I've got the setup and I know what I'm doing, this is easier 
than using scissors. And like I said, I've got some chronic pain in my hand and so this is going to help with that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit fast forward, cut out all these wheels and I'll be right back with you. Okay, as I cut out this last one, um, there's a couple things about this I wish was different. I wish this top plunger was clear so you could look straight down through it. Um, this hand is starting to get tired. If you have chronic hand pain, I'm just sharing with you. This hand is starting to get tired from holding really tight. You gotta make sure your tape that's holding down your, your paper is really down. I keep not securing it and it gets loose. But this is way faster and easier even with all the fiddling and learning curve This is way faster than using scissors. So if if that's a, a Concern for you then this is worth the investment. I'll put a link to this little tool in our Amazon store so you can pick it up if you're interested But that's pretty slick and look how nice that looks that's pretty cool. I'm impressed with that. Okay, so we're gonna put the little plunger, whatever it's called, <laughs> back on so I don't lose it. And then to adjust it, we learned you turn this part of the tool counterclockwise. That loosens this part and you turn it clockwise to tighten it back up. So it's a pretty slick little tool. I'm impressed. So I'm glad I have the spare blades so I can use it all I want. That's pretty great. Okay, so the next phase, now that we have all of these amazing, oh, and I love that they're all exactly the same size. The, the little OCD in me is like, ooh, that's really nice. <laughs> okay, so the next part of this process is these little guys right here. So that's where my next little handy tool is going to come into play. So I have two of these because I wasn't sure if I'd need the one inch or the three quarter inch. We'll find out here. So we're gonna use my ruler again, measure this guy up, and he's definitely a one inch. So again, I'm gonna hit fast forward while I go through the learning curve. I've got, I think, some pre-printed here. Um, yeah, they're not colored. So I'm gonna practice on these and then come back and give you my hint. Okay, I think I have learned enough now to show you what I figured out. So, what I did, this little punch by Cowandite, Caddy-10 Eva Foam Maker. Shapes size one inch is what I'm using. It has a trap door on the back to hold the punched out round shapes for you. So I took that out so that I could see what the blades were doing and that was a big help. Then, what you need to do is cut it down like this. And then the one that you're going to cut, cut pretty close to the edge like this. And then instead of cutting it like it's meant, like this, where you hold it down and push, you're gonna flip it over and slide it between the, the dies, the cut there, so that you can actually see what you're cutting, see? Then you can line it up exactly right. This way, if you were trying to do it, there's just no telling where you're lined up. So this is the way to do it. And then you can line it up and pop it out. Very satisfying and way easier than cutting them all out. Then the next one, you just take your scissors, trim it off. Now, what I did wrong on the other strip is I had cut this off way too close on this end because you still need something to hold on to. You'll see that. So um, I'm going to fast forward through here and when I get to yellow I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so here we are at yellow, and what I did last time, like I said, was I didn't have anything to hold on to. So this time, you can see you need a little extra leeway here just to hold on to that edge, get it lined up, and look how satisfying. Pop! <laughs> and you got a perfect little circle. So here's all of our colors. Throw the trash away. And that is fantastic. So that's the best way to use this little cutter. I'll put this guy in our Amazon shop too in case you decide you want to pick him up somehow. This goes on there, but yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do with these little guys, stack them up and I've got a little mini binder clip that will hold them together. You could use a little envelope. Um, yeah, there's lots of paper clip would work great too. That'll hold them together for now so I don't lose them. Okay, so the next thing we need to figure out is how to cut out these circles so there's a little window on each of these. So the little dotted lines here on each of these circles. So I'm going to measure those and see if they're one inch or a different size. And yeah, this one is three quarter inch on the warm color and three quarter inch on the cool colors. Let's see over here. These are one inch on the rest of the wheels it looks like. They're all one inch. So I'm trying to figure out how we're going to line these up. So I know I bought this one here is a three quarter inch. This is by EK Tools, a medium punch. So I'm gonna fast forward as I go through the learning process and I'll be right back and tell you how this guy works. Okay, that was an easy learning process. So the EK Tools um, guy here, he's really heavy and beefy. This one is well made. It has a nice little three quarter inch circle right there, so you know. And the way it works has a little lock right here, so you have to unlock it. So that's kind of nice. This guy's really well made. And then all you have to do, this was really fun. <laughs> you ready for something fun? Hopefully it's just as satisfying. Again, we're not gonna do it the standard way. We're going to flip it over so we can line it up, slide it between the die cut here, and get it as lined up as possible. You know, and looking at it, I wonder if the one inch one would still work, but anyway, doesn't matter. We're doing the three quarter inch, just so you can see how the EK Tools punch works. And that's good enough. And here we go. <laughs> That's really fun. <laughs> All right, yeah, we're gonna have some fun here. <laughs> okay, so that is that tool. Kinda wish I had more to do. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> All right, that was satisfying. So at least I know if I can't get the other punch to punch the way I want on the other wheels, we can resort to this guy. That was lots of fun. <laughs> little things in life make you happy, right? And look at all the happy little circles I have. I could do a background on a on a coloring page with all these circles if I wanted to. Or we'll just throw them away and keep moving. Okay. <laughs> My creative mind started. Oh, you could glitter them and you could watercolor <laughs> them. And anyway, keep moving, Jennifer. Okay. So let's see if we can make this guy, if his jaws are wide enough to reach all the way in. That's my question. Oh yeah, flip it over. And because I added a, an allowance on the side. Right. So did I do a no-no? I did a no-no. I think if I hadn't added that allowance, we could have used this guy. So we may have to use him because he's got wider jaws. See, look, I could go way in with him. Yeah. So I'm okay, because I get to use the happy little bouncy guy. <laughs> she doesn't care. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, that was the last one. That was so much fun. <laughs> Wish I had more to do. <laughs> okay, so let me show you how this system works. I'm gonna lock this. That was a good buy. I'm glad I got that one. And put this, I'll put it all up later. Put all these tools in here. And wow, definitely worth that three quarter inch punch. Glad I purchased this as well. That was really worth it as well. Sped up the whole process. So what you end up with in the end are these wheels here and these little colored dots and a whole bunch of fun little white dots. Move this box out of the way and show you now how to pick colors using these color wheel manipulatives. Get these dots out of the way here. Oh, they're just so fun. <laughs> Okay, so let's bring back the quick color picker book. Now you will turn to the main color wheel. So what you're going to do now is use these color wheels on top of this pre-printed color wheel. And what you're going to do now is let me get this white one out of the way too. All right, let's say you have a coloring page. I went and grabbed a coloring page for us. This is in one of my coloring books that you can have printed at Coloring Bliss. And um, we're going to imagine that we are trying to pick colors for this coloring page right here. So we're going to use our new tools that we just prepared to pick a color scheme. I'm gonna show you how quick and easy this is. Each of these wheels have hints and tips and tricks and this is so cool. I'm so excited to show you this. Okay, so uh, we're gonna skip over the cool colors and warm colors real quick because this is more teaching color theory, ideas on helping you understand the difference between cool colors and warm colors. You lay this on, basically and read these in, this information right here. It will teach you about cool colors, when to use them, how they are best used. Same with this one right here, warm colors here. So spend some time reading about it and it will help you understand that color theory. Okay, but this is where it gets really exciting. We have complementary, analogous, and split complementary, triadic. We've already read all of those. Um, my favorite, which we'll just skip to real quick, is the split complementary color scheme. Um, the, the reason I like this one is because it's relatively simple. It's going to give us three colors, so most people can control three colors. I, I love that. Three colors gives you a little variety, a little depth, a little interest, um, but it's not so complicated that you've got colors going everywhere. That's why I like it. I can control three colors. Okay, so what I usually do, bring up the split complementary color scheme and I look at my coloring page. Let's get both of these up here so you can see it. That's pretty good. I look at my coloring page and I kind of get a feel for what I'm going to need. Um, I look at this and I can see I'm probably gonna need a green um, because I've got some leaves. Um, that's pretty much it, I'm gonna need a green. Then I go off of what I feel. What am I feeling like today? What do I feel in the mood for? Autumny feel, spring feel, summer feel, or maybe I'm coloring this for someone. Maybe I'm coloring it for my husband and I know he likes blue, so I'm gonna wanna go for blues. Or maybe for a particular nephew who loves orange. Those are the kinds of next thoughts I would have. Okay, I know I'm gonna wanna green. So now I start laying this out. Let me scooch this over just a little bit so you can see the full wheel. All right, now what I'm gonna do is, you got a couple greens to pick from here. So am I in the mood for yellow green? Am I in the mood for green? Am I in the mood for blue green? <sighs> I love tertiary colors. <laughs> tertiary colors are these guys right here, the ones that have multiple words. Those are tertiary colors. Tertiary color is a really complex color, it has lots of things going on, yellow and green. Green is made up of blue and, and yellow. You start thinking about what we learned back in kindergarten and, and first grade, that's what you're gonna be thinking about with tertiary colors. So I'm gonna pick a tertiary color and lay this on like that, and there's your first color scheme. So then you bring up these little round circles that we made and you're gonna pull up the violet, the red, and the yellow green and lay these out. 
So we need red. We need violet. Where are you? Violet. Here you are, violet. And we need yellow green. Okay, so these three little dots are going to help me start imagining now. Where would I put these three colors on my coloring page? I'd probably put the yellow green on the leaf and I could put violet flowers and maybe red in the background or the red in the flower and violet in the background. Kind of like that, but you know, not a huge fan of that. So now I come back to my wheel, give it a little rotation. I know I still want yellow green in my color scheme. So I'm gonna flip it so another window shows yellow green. Okay, we've got yellow green, we've got violet, and we've got yellow orange. Ooh, another tertiary color. So red goes away and we've got yellow orange that comes up. Okay, let's see, maybe violet for the flowers and yellow orange for the background. Ooh, I like <laughs> that one a lot. It's got two tertiary colors and violet. I think I kind of like violet. What do you guys think? <laughs> so I'm liking that one a lot, but let's see if we rotate this wheel one more time, what colors come up. Okay, rotate. Ooh, blue green. So we still have our yellow green. I'm gonna slide these guys to the side because I have a feeling that's gonna be the winning one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yellow green, let's bring up blue green and let's bring up red. Now that's kind of interesting. I like that. We'd have a red, primary red color. Red is a warm color. Now, if we had spent the time reading about warm colors, we would know that warm colors tend to attract more attention. They're bright and bold. Warm colors move towards us. So it would move towards the eye of the viewer. So if we colored those flowers red, that would bring a lot of attraction. It would, that would be really interesting. And then we could have a blue green as the background, or we could do something crazy and switch those around and have blue green leaves and a yellow green background. That could be cool. Or we could be totally wild and break all the rules and red leaves. I liked that better. <laughs> so that's a color scheme I would never have thought of. That's totally out of my, this is me. This I would have thought of. But this, I would not have leaned myself towards that. This is the power of these wheels. This is why I get excited. Because all of a sudden, color schemes that I am not comfortable with, color schemes that I don't gravitate towards start coming up in front of me and I start considering them and I get excited about them and it pushes me into tools that I don't usually use. This is what I'm excited for you to have. This is why I like having these manipulatives that you can hold them in your hand. You can start moving these little circles around, imagining where you would put the colors. This is the power of these color wheel manipulatives and why I wanted them in your hands. I'm so excited. This is just one of the color wheels. You can bring up a different one. This is the complementary color scheme. Oh, this one wheel alone is just, we need a whole video on this one. Here's another one. Oh, we forgot to punch. I get to punch more holes. <laughs> <laughs> So this is why this is so exciting. And I can't wait to show you the rest of this book because the excitement, the things I learned from these wheels is where the rest of the book comes from. Are you ready to see the rest of the book? This is so cool. So, okay, let's put all these little wheels together. I'm gonna to put them all in their little sheet protector so I don't lose them. And now I'm gonna show you how to take what we learn here and go to the rest of the book and show you 144 different color combinations. Are you ready? Okay, let's hit fast forward. I'm gonna clean up and show you what I've got to show you. Okay, I've flipped to the next section of the book. This is called The Color Schemes. This is the full color version of this book. And like I said, it was really inspired by the first part of the book. And look at this. This is full colored, 
pre-colored color schemes. So how this came to be was, if you look at these color wheels right here, when you spin them on the color wheel and start seeing the different color schemes I was showing you come up, what we did was take those results and translated them onto these pages here. So um, you, every time you rotate the wheel, a different color scheme appears and we put them on to these pages so you can see them all translated, all there and beautiful and ready to look at. And then we organize them by color. There's a term you need to know. It's called a mother color or a dominant color. So let's say we've got a coloring page like this one right here and you know right away when you saw this, I want to color these flowers red. <laughs> okay, uh, you have a mother who um, is turning 60 and you want to color this for her in her honor and her favorite color is red. How's that for a story? <laughs> so you decide I need a color scheme based on red. This is the page I'm going to do. So the power of this book now is you can come and flip to the red page. So this one is yellow. We're going to flip down. Look at all these colors. We're going to flip down to the red page right here. Sorry, I keep bumping markers here. And here you are presented with a whole bunch of color schemes, all based off of when you rotate these wheels. So here's the rectangle tetradic, and right down here is the rectangle tetradic. Okay, so these are all based off of red being your mother or dominant color. So every single one of these color schemes has red as one of the colors in the color scheme. So now, whatever you pick here, red can be your dominant color. So look how fun this is. You've got complementary, analogous, split complementary, square tetrahedral. They're all showing here. You've even got a monochromatic color scheme. Now you can kind of sit back, look at them, and see what jumps out at you, what inspires you. Again, you can look and say, okay, I know I need some green because I've got some leaves. So you can look through and look for something that has a little green in it and pick one of those. Or maybe you know she also likes the color orange. She loves red and orange, so then you would look for something that has some green and some orange and some red, and oh, that square tetradic would be great because I could do a blue-violet background. I've got my red and my yellowy-orange color and some green for the leaves, and there you go, and away you go. You've got your color scheme. So that's how this in general works. I'm going to take it even deeper for you because now the next question we usually get is, all right, I've got a color scheme. How do I take this and take it to my pencils and pick some colors? So I'm going to explain that to you next because this is really exciting. I can't wait to show it to you. Okay, so let's continue on with our scenario that we're going to be coloring this for our mother and we're using the square tetradic color scheme. Now, there's a page in this book that's going to become one of your most favorite pages in this book and it's up a little further in the book kind of right after where we cut out all those color wheels, and it's this page right here. And it's called the swatch chart. It says swatch chart, color wheel tritone sets, and it's a color reference guide. And it's going to help you pick the right colors for this um, color scheme that we've just picked. It's a fantastic page. It's breaking down all of the shades that you need to come up with a perfect blend for each of these colors in your color scheme. So between this page and the color scheme you just picked, that's going to help us pick our colors. So uh, if I were you, I would mark this page, maybe with a paper clip or a post-it note, something like that, just so you can quickly find it again. So I've got one post-it note right there. I'm gonna grab another post-it note and put it on the red page so we can reference that quickly and find it. And then there's one other page I want you to find so that we can reference it quickly. And that's back here. Um, in the back of our book, we have provided for you some blank swatches. And this has a couple things. We have a swatch 
reference page here. Again, a place for you to um, match up your tools and find the right color for every color that you need. And then some blank swatches. And the great thing about blank swatches is once you find the perfect red, the perfect blue, the perfect green, you can swatch it out and make a note of it. And then later when you come back and color a new color scheme, you can come and find now what was that red that I used from that set of pencils because that's the red I want to use again. Okay, so we've got a couple pages marked now so we can move through our book quickly and easily. Okay, so what we're going to do now is reference the colors that we need. We know we need blue violet and for this page I want to color with my Black Widow pencils. I haven't used these in a long time. I've got the full set, at least currently. I believe they're going to be releasing new pencils. So I've got a full set as far as right now. It's February 2020. So we've got all kinds of pencils here. And this is going to be a bit of a process because I don't have my swatches. So in an ideal world, I would have these all swatched in a separate swatch book. If you're looking for an awesome swatch book, we also sell those. So what I recommend is you swatch out, and if you have a set like this, swatch them all out into a swatch book. And then what you can do is take those swatches and hold them up against these little sample colors, and that will make it a lot easier. So I'm going to hit fast forward here as I kind of go through and find the colors I need and then I'll show you what I found, why I picked what I picked, and I'll show you what we do after that. Okay, so I've gone through the Black Widow pencils and looked for colors for each of the square tetradic color scheme that we have chosen for this coloring page right here. So what we're looking for is a light, medium, and dark color from our color pencils for each of these four colors. So ideally what we'll come up with is 12 pencils. So what we did is looked at the green, and I found these three pencils. Now we're not going to find a perfect match um, for all three of these greens, but we're looking for as close as possible for a light, medium, and dark green. So that's why this page is going to be your best friend. And if you need a bigger swatch, you can switch back here to the page right before the blank swatches. And here you can see again, here's the greens right here, a light, medium, and dark green. If you're wondering about these numbers that we've given each of the colors, they correspond right over here with this page. So actually they correspond with the color wheel, I believe. So it's just a, a way to number them. So what you can do now is if you find in your set of pencils a perfect green medium, you can name it a number three. So you always remember that if you need a green medium color the, for your number three spot, um, you always reach for that certain pencil. So I grabbed these three for my light, medium, and dark green. Now I can switch to the back of this book right here and I can swatch these three greens into these squares. I usually swatch um, kind of full pressure at the top of the swatch down to a lighter pressure at the bottom. So you can see the full spectrum of what that tool can do. And then usually with a black pen, like a Sharpie or a stapler, something like that, I will write down the name of that color, Cicada and it's BW for Black Widow 13 is what it says. Okay, and then you can write down the number that you're going to be using it for, and we're using it for the light green, which is number 15. So in parentheses, I'm gonna write down that I'm using it for number 15. Then you swatch the next one.
Okay, so I have all three of my green pencils swatched and referenced to what color I'm using. Now the reason we're taking a moment to do this right now before we start coloring is so that later if I come back to do another color scheme and I want to use green again, I don't have to go through and repeat this work. I've already figured out the light, medium, and dark for green. I can go find them in my set and the next time I color this process will be way faster. Now if if you would like us to do that kind of work for you, we've already done it for certain sets of tools like the Polychromos, the Derwent Ink Tents, Prismacolors, um, Tombows, a whole bunch of tools have already be done, been done and we are planning on releasing even more brand specific tritones. So when you buy a book or download the tritones for brand specific items, it looks like this. Let me show you. So, oh, I opened right to the red page. That's handy. So down here at Square Tetratic, the very same color scheme. You can see we've got blue, violet, red, yellow, orange, and green. And right here it tells you exactly the three pencils to go grab for Prismacolor 910, 909, and 907. And those will be a perfect light, medium, and dark. So this is really powerful. All the colors are pre-configured for you and figured Figured out so you don't have to go and do the hunting that I just did through the um, Black Widow pencil sets. All of it is done for you. So this becomes like a color by number. Now the advantage of having the pre-colored color scheme selector is you don't have to do the coloring. All the colors are laid out in front of you. So for this book here, I had to go in and do all the coloring. Now let me show you what the Prisma colors look like once you go in and do all the coloring. Um, right here is the red page all colored in. So here is the square tetratic colored with Prismacolor pencils. So I could go grab these uh, 12 pencils and color this coloring page that we're planning on coloring for our mom. And I know that these are the 12 colors and that's exactly the colors that will be on that page with the polychrome, no, the Prismacolor pencils. So come and check out our brand specific um, tritones take care of all the work for you. So, and if there is a specific brand that you would like us to figure out the tritones for, let us know, comment below. Okay, so let's get back to this. And I'm going to fill out the other pencils that I found into these swatches right here. And you can see all the beautiful colors that we can color into this coloring page. Okay, so I've got all my pencils swatched and ready and organized into their tritones. Now, I wasn't able to find a really good light blue violet in this set of pencils. Maybe in the new ones they release, they'll have a good light blue violet. But that's okay, because a lot of times in our smaller sets, like if you only have 24 in your set of um, markers or in your set of gel pens or whatever, you're not always going to find a full set of tritones. So you can either reach for a different group of tools or you can just do two. It's up to you what you want to do. So I just left a blank right there so that I'll always remember I didn't have a good light. Um, so I'm going to make do with just two for this blend and that will be just fine. Maybe you'll only be able to find one. I've got um, lots of sets of pencils where all I have are 24 tools and there's times where you're only going to find one color to represent one of the colors in your color scheme and that's totally fine. You'll be fine. You can work with that. So now we're organized and this is a great moment where you can take a, a second and look and see how beautiful these colors look and imagine how pretty they're going to look on your coloring page. And that's so fun. And like I said, you've already put in the work. Now next time when you reach for these pencils and you 
green is part of that color scheme, you know exactly which three colors to go pull for and you're automatically coloring. So that's how this swatching part of the book works. Okay, so there's just two more little items in this awesome book that I want to show you and then we'll do a quick wrap up of this book. And that's right here. There's a section here called Mini Wheels. And I'll show that to you. This is such a pretty page. So when you fill out uh, the colored version that I showed you for like Prismacolor pencils or uh, Tombow markers, um, there's a moment in there where you get to take all these colors that you pull out and you get to color all the lights into one wheel, all the medium tones into one wheel, and all the dark tones into one wheel. What this does for you is it's a way to train your eye, kind of um, help your eye see these tones in a different way. So I wanted that to be included in this full color reference so that you can take a moment and look at each wheel and see the differences. You can see where pastels come from. Where does pink come from? I get that question all the time. Where does pink come from? Where? Why don't I see pink on a standard artist color wheel? Let me show you what an artist color wheel looks like. Okay, so this is a standard artist color wheel. This is the kind that I picked up in the beginning of my color theory journey. Um, and it has a lot of awesome information, but it was very overwhelming to me when I first got it. In fact, I was too scared to even look at the back of this color wheel. Um, so I learned a little bit from it, but I didn't learn a whole lot from it because I was too scared. The color theory scared me. And I had the same questions you have. Where does brown come from? Why don't I see See it on here. Where is pink? Um, how does it, how, you know, I know where pink come from. It's just a lighter version of red, but why isn't it shown here on the wheel? So I wanted to have this here because all of a sudden you start to see where browns come from. It's a darker version of some of these colors. You see where pinks come from. It's a light version of red. So this is a page specifically here to help start training your eye. So as you're picking your colors out in your tools, you've got 150 tools in front of you, 150 markers. How do you find that light red? You need to start training your eye and that's why this page is here. So you can take a moment, cover these wheels, look at them, let your eyes feast on the beauty of these colors. Now there's one more page right here. It's the swatch strip page. And again, it has all the colors, the 36 main colors that you're going to be building as you start swatching and finding them in your sets. And what you can do is eventually when you've got all 36, so here we've got 11. We weren't able to find all 12 because we couldn't find a light blue violet, but we've got 11, right? So once I find 36 out of the Black Widow that I really like, I can line these all up in a case and take this swatch strip now and have them all set up. Let me show you what I did with my Prismacolors so that you can fully understand how amazing this swatch strip is. Okay, so this is a case where I keep all my Prismacolor Premier pencils. And over here are the 36, the 36 <laughs> that we toiled over. And I've taken the swatch strips, and in my case, I cut them up so that each loop has the corresponding tritone. So yellow, yellow, green, green, all the way down to the yellow orange. And you can see um, I've laminated them so that they can be beat up and and well loved in this book, which they are well loved. So you can do the same with your markers, with your gel pens, whatever it is that you set up your own tritones, you can forever permanently label them as this is the three. The three I'm going to use every time I need green, I can reach for those three. This has become so amazing. I can just reach for my tritones. So let me give you another quick scenario. Let's say I'm coloring for my husband. It's his birthday coming up. I'm coloring a page and I want a blue color scheme because it's his favorite color. So I could very quickly 
switch over here to blue and I can look and say, okay, I know he loves blue. I know he's kind of into the blue green as I am right now. So maybe I'm going to do an analogous color scheme for him because he's also been kind of interested in analogous color schemes with me. So let's say... Analogous too. Oh, he wants me to pick analogous too. <laughs> so he's leaning towards this one right here. So maybe I'm going to color these beautiful girly flowers for him. <laughs> but I'm going to do them in a very masculine analogous to color scheme right here. So let's say I'm going to reach for my Prismacolors. So I know I need blue violet. They're labeled right here. Pull these three out. I need blue right here. Pull these three out. And I need blue green right here. Pull these three out. And I've got them all, all nine pencils. Close these and I'm coloring. It's that fast. Once you have your pencils picked and they're organized, you go to the color scheme color picker, it tells you which ones to pick and bam, you're coloring. That's awesome. Within seconds. It's so cool. Now, the next question I always get is, what about the other 130 pencils in the set? Now, that's where you reach for, uh, I need a little more contrast, I need it to go deeper so I could reach back in here and come find an even deeper blue. I've got even more pencils over here. I've got my Prismacolors in two cases. So I could come in here and go for an even deeper, darker blue. Or let's say I decide, you know what, this really needs a little pop of yellow. So I could come in and grab this yellow. Or maybe I decide, side you know it really needs some silver a silver bling and I yes. could reach for some silver or maybe it needs some neon pink <laughs> so I could throw in a little neon pink so the other pencils are here to support give depth dimension and then they're also here because you know this color scheme would not lend itself towards a portrait or, you know, there's certain specific situations where you need the other pencils. And that's where the rest are. In fact, these are organized for doing portraiture. And, and then I have some organized, these are the um, Verithins. Anyway, it, these are very well loved and very well used. But because these are so well organized in these perfect blends, these get used the most. So it's fantastic. I can't wait for you to have this system all set up and in your hands and ready to go. It's amazing. Okay, so we have gone through the quick color picker. I've shown you how it's all set up now with the manipulatives and how to go through a set like the Black Widows and find pencils to match. Now I think I've given you everything you need to get going into this amazing tool. Remember that if you decide you want a brand specific um, Color Wheel Tritone worksheet book to come and check that out at coloringbliss.com, see which brands we have, or you can get a blank one that is totally empty, no um, colors printed in it, no names and numbers. You can fill it in for yourself. Um, we've got lots of options for you. So again, this quick color picker system here that is all pre-colored and everything is fantastic as a way for you to start color matching any brand that you have so that you can pick colors, use it with your gel pens, your markers, your any brand of color pencils, you're picking colors and confident. I mean, heck, you could even design a bedroom off of this quick color picker. It's going to be really great. You can even pick an outfit using this. <laughs> this is a great way to start learning color theory and you're picking colors really fast. So I can't wait for you to get this book into your hands and start having the power of the quick color picker. And I hope you have a wonderful, colorful day. Bye-bye, everyone.